Welcome to the Women of Ambition podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Calder-Hume. The Women of Ambition podcast is a space where women come together to destigmatize female ambition and help each other harness their drive to align with their unique values. I've said this before, but it's particularly important to point out today. Ambition is a neutral trait, neither good nor bad, and is apparent throughout the lives of those people with that trait. So it's separate from any kind of monetary reward, professional success, or other title. Today's guest is a great example of this. We have our first professional athlete on the show. I'm so excited to share McKenna's story to get a different take of what ambition can look like. And you will hear the joy that running brings McKenna. You have to have joy when you're running nine months pregnant and then choosing to jump back into it two weeks after your baby's born. Um, anyone who has been pregnant or knows a pregnant woman can uh, understand how maybe that doesn't sound so fun, but for McKenna, it is her joy and her ambition and her drive to succeed and, uh, push her body are what is self-care for her. And so I'm really excited to share this story and I hope that we can use this as an analogy for all of our ambition and how other people might not quite get it, but how it, when it's correct for us we can move forward and find the support that we need to be successful. Hello, and welcome to the Women of Ambition podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Calder-Hume, and today we have McKenna Myler here. Thanks so much for coming on, McKenna. Hi, Alyssa. (laughs) Uh, McKenna recently became known for running a five-minute, 20-second mile, nine months pregnant, which I've seen pictures of that. It's insane. Um, (laughs) Ten days before giving birth, Seven months after the birth of her baby girl, she qualified for the 10K at the Olympic trials where she placed 14th out of the top women in the nation. She just signed with ASICS um, and is now training as a professional athlete in Utah. Most importantly, she loves being a full-time mom and taking care of her sweet baby girl, Kenny Lou. So thanks so much for being on, McKenna. Yes, we're here. Let's talk. Let's talk about ambition. <laughs> awesome. Woo-hoo. That's what I like to hear. I, I'm so excited to have you on because I feel like I fall into this trap of wanting to talk to like specifically business women or entrepreneurs. And like when I think of ambition, it's easy to fall into like this business mindset. But I, I'm so glad you're here because you are highly ambitious and you're an athlete. And that's like a whole new category that is available to most people that we haven't even like haven't even scratched the surface on. So thank you for being the first person in this category for us. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad trap to fall into. I'd say I really <laughs> look up to those women who are really <laughs> ambitious in the business world, and it's it's yeah, they're inspiring to be honest. I have, my sister in law is one of them, and yeah, it's it's fun to watch her work. <laughs> okay, but um running races nine months pregnant like what how did how did you get how did you get there like olympic trials like okay let's start at the beginning um have you always wanted to achieve and like run races like have were you competitive as a child like where did all this come from tell us about that yeah i mean so when i was little my my brother used to line me up against his friends and he (laughs) would have me race them uh that was just you know like part of our like childhood games uh and that was even like like before the bell would start at grade school I would be racing one of his friends across the the courtyard and we just thought that was so funny um and you know so I was quick I I thought I was one of the quicker girls in the school uh but as I as I matured things started changing right um there were some girls that I, I transferred schools and um in middle school and there was one girl who was faster than me and I was like oh wait I'm I'm not the fastest person (laughs) here so I mean yeah I'm what I'm trying to say is I did show some some promise you could say but I I was not uh, a phenom by any means and okay um I just found that I I enjoyed it and I I liked things that involved running such as soccer um or tag you know so I I spent a lot of time uh, running around, especially barefoot as a child. So that was fun. good for your feet, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I attribute that to, you know, not getting injured quite as often as, as some runners do. <laughs> Excellent. So when did, when did you start actually competing? So I, 
in seventh and eighth grade, they do a track meet uh, for the middle schools. And so I, I did do some competitions then, but there was no real training. The training was like, or you got picked, it was like, go race this um, event. Like if you want to do the one lap and, and we'll take the top, you know, five people who are the fastest in the one lap and, and you can just sign your name. So there, there was no lead up or training. So official training for me really didn't start until high school when my uh, cross country coach recruited me from the soccer team and was like, Hey, like you're gonna you're gonna come run cross country for me. Uh, I've heard that story before. They like to steal soccer players. Yes, <laughs> that yeah. endurance. Yeah, so I feel like I'm actually it's pre I'm pretty typical. Like, yeah, from from soccer to cross country, uh, they, that tends to be a, a pretty normal transition. Um, yeah, and and then I I kind of looked up to the girls on my team in cross country and and they showed me the ropes. I remember one time we were, I was doing some mileage with a senior and she said, don't be like the other freshmen and just sprint down the street at the end of the run. Like real runners just like keep a steady pace. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just trying to learn from, from people above me. And so mm -hmm. uh, it kind of it kept, kept evolving from there. Yeah, that's great. So was that, did you start freshman year in high school? Yeah, so I, I, I yeah, I started competing uh, my freshman year, and, and and you know something funny actually happened in high school. Not funny. No, again, this is normal, but mm -hmm. I gained a ton of weight because I matured to be a woman instead yes. of this little girl, <laughs> um, and so that was a huge transition. Uh, I remember, and, and I didn't even like realize that it was like a weight thing, um, but yeah, my times all of a sudden started getting. A bit more strained like it didn't feel quite as as free when i was running mm -hmm. uh, and and so transitioning to that and understanding my body as a woman took honestly until like past college uh mm -hmm. there's just not that much information especially at the time about how how to um yeah listen to your body as a woman and and mm -hmm. how it responds to certain stimulus and so yeah, I can totally see it, how hard that would be maturing, like going through puberty and then also having these high expectations for yourself. Right. And I think I honestly, a ton of women go through that, um, mm -hmm. especially these small little girls who are super fast and then mature and, and gain this awesome weight. And <laughs> they're like, wait, what do I do? My, my body's not used to this. Um, but it's really cool to see uh, women who thrive through that as well. And I, I feel like I got to be um, one of those women who maybe initially didn't thrive, uh, but I figured it out and, and used that yeah. more strength than, than an inhibitor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine training while through pregnancy. Like that is the most dramatic body change that yes. I think you one can go through <laughs> so how like did you plan that or did you just move forward with training and also pregnancy what was that like oh I love the way you phrase that so with I'm all about moving forward mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and I always kind of have a plan and a goal kind of in the distance, but I really did not focus there. I keep my focus um, pretty close, <laughs> maybe with, even within a week, a month. Um, and so so with pregnancy, finding out I was pregnant, uh, that, that's actually how the whole thing started with my husband saying, you know, you, you probably wouldn't be able to break eight minutes in the mile because you'd pee your pants and I'd have to take you to the <laughs> hospital because you'd be in labor. <laughs> It's like, because we just had no concept of um, like how my body would change. And so mm -hmm. initially I was like, wait, I think maybe I could still break seven minutes in the mile by the time I'm nine months pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, just because I had like slowed down so dramatically. And, and by the time that rolled around, we had just taken it week by week. I had so many workouts where I was like, this is probably my last workout for sure. <laughs> This is, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm done with interval workouts. I'm just going to do mileage from here on out. And it, you know, the next week would roll around and I was like, my friends are doing a workout. Like I might as well just jump in with them or, 
um, you know, my body is feeling good. I, I'm going to see what happens if I, if I push it a little more today. Um, so it was, it was different and your body changes so much. <laughs> so a lot of those expectations, uh, were definitely dropped as, as my body was changing. Um, and, and when I say dropped, I just didn't have expectations really. Um, Un completely uncharted territory, right? Yes. <laughs> like for your body, but then like, talk about lack of information, like, yes, totally. like I'm sure you're not probably the only woman to, to do this, but like there's not like studies about it. Like you, your coach probably hadn't gone through it and couldn't tell you what it was like. Like, I assume you have a running coach that you've been working with. Is that true? Uh, yeah. So I've had people that I've, I've referenced with, but I've actually been coaching myself Wow. Um, and been doing just a lot of research myself. Uh, and like you, like you said, like there actually are women who have uh, done it. And, and so I was re researching these women, their names like Kara, Kara Goucher, or Gwen Jorgensen or Paula Radcliffe who had, you know, had babies and then they started running. Um, I mean, they were already running professionally. So this was like their career. They had a baby and then they came back to running professionally. And so that's why it was actually a little bit different for me because um, I was not close to the level that I'm competing at now. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that was kind of strange. I, have, I haven't really heard of anyone make quite the same leap. <laughs> Uh, that I made making progress in their running career <laughs> as their belly grows. Yeah. Oh well. Well. Okay. No. I. I mean, they. they there have been women who who have gotten better, but like, from, I don't know. I. I guess I. I wasn't at a professional level before, and. and mm -hmm. um, yeah, at a professional level, postpartum was was kind of wild. Uh, seeing that happen, and. And that kind of had a lot to do with, uh, you know, staying present and, and making sure that I was just doing things to keep me healthy then and there and, and letting the outcome kind of take care of itself. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was my philosophy for just surviving pregnancy. So I think it's pretty great <laughs> that you could also apply that to your career and moving forward in that. Um, okay. So did you run in in college? Like, what was that? What was the part before you got pregnant? Oh. What was that running start of that career like for you? Yeah. So, so after high school, I was recruited uh, to BYU, and I went and ran there for five years. Uh, at at the start, I remember actually, uh, we we would do camp at Park City, and I remember coming up to camp straight from sea level, and this is to eight thousand feet. And, you know, I, I didn't quite understand the concept of altitude. I knew it was supposed to be harder, but I just, I thought, you know, the magic is going to happen. I'm going to be able to run us like, like all with these women and just run super fast. And we did one of the first workouts up here and I just took off for, you know, it's like a three mile tempo. And I took off with these women who, you know, are some of the best in the nation. And I was just coming out of high school. And I just remember dying super hard. <laughs> like it starts hurting in your arms. Like you're breathing super heavy and the muscles everywhere are just tightening. Um, so you didn't and, die freshman year of high school, but yeah. college, you yeah. had the humbling experience. Oh, very much, very much. Um, and and so I, I, again, I mentioned this before, I've always got to, to learn from the women above me. Um, and I learned kind of the the patients, um, when you get to college, the workouts get a lot harder. And so you have to take your easy days easier. Mm. Um, and so in, in high school, you just run, it's like you run hard all the time, it's mm -hmm. like workout day, aerobic day, and then like another workout day. And you just are like trying to hammer as much as possible. And, and your body kind of keeps up with it, uh, being as young as you are. But once you get to college, yeah, you're running a ton faster mm -hmm. and, so, and you're, you're adding more volume. And so your easy days need to be easier. And that was like a huge learning curve as well as, is learning that it's not just who works the hardest. It's mm -hmm. also about who balances their life the best. Oh, and yeah. So <laughs> good. Oh my gosh. How applicable is that to like life? Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to quote that on, on Instagram. That's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh well i will i mean so so and then on top of that I, there's it gets even more intricate like you it which is so cool because running is such a great sport where you know anyone can do it and, and you can start and you know take off down your street uh you just need some running shoes and but at some the asics time, yeah get some asics <laughs> right right <laughs> you know the good brand um but at the same time it gets so intricate um because you have these micro and macro cycles and and so even within your hard and easy days you have hard and easy weeks um and then like you have you know bigger months and then like more intense months uh, you know, if we're, with more volume or this, like this couple months is going to be more speed training. And so, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of macro and micro cycles that I think we could learn uh, to be like applicable to our lives that, you know, there, there are seasons to our lives. <laughs> like, um, yeah. You know, with your kids even, and how, how often you're going to be at the gym or how often you're going to be out with your friends. It's just those. Yeah. There's seasons to our lives. <laughs> yeah, I, I really yeah. appreciate that. What What's it like the rest cycle after a big push for a competition? How long is that rest period yeah, that's, for you? So, so usually I, I try to take like a week to two weeks of uh, either not running or just running kind of when I feel like it or maybe doing other activities like swimming and biking, um, not pushing yourself. You kind of want to get to this like, depletion mode of like mentally where you're like I really want to go run again you know and if you don't mm -hmm. get there that's probably not a good sign or maybe you came back to running <laughs> too early uh or maybe running's not your thing so yeah so, so that's you, you make sure you take like a really deep mental break and that always rewards a very successful season when you take a good break that's really cool I I've heard this from people that so much of running is like mental, mm -hmm. um, mental motivation, like overcoming mental obstacles. Have you, have you found that to be true? So I've actually been thinking a ton about that lately because it's people always want to grasp onto one concept and they want to be mm -hmm. like, running's all mental or then that's like you ah. go talk to these scientists and it's like well these are all the markers that your body is showing and this is how fast like your potential really is after all the science is is saying and and it's so cool because you get to use both and mm -hmm. like you get to see like okay the, you get to work within your body's parameters uh which is is a really cool uh part of training and uh but at the same time, yeah, there's a huge mental um, switch to to knowing how capable you are um, mm -hmm. and to being like, okay, I can do this and then set out to try and do something um, that, yeah, that is a huge part because if you are, are scared and, and freaking out, like I, there's no way I can run two miles or four miles, uh, you're, you're already setting yourself up for uh, your body to, to as soon as it shows signs of being tired, you're going to mm -hmm. want to stop. But if you set mm -hmm. yourself up in the way that's like, I can do this, as soon as it shows signs of being tired, you say, okay, it's a, like, this is expected, but I'm going to keep pushing because I can. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the same symptoms. It's just, you know, a different outcome because like you said, the, this mental part um, of, of pushing and uh, yeah, <laughs> setting yourself up for success uh, help, helps a ton. Okay, awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about those different elements then. So there's the mental that we've talked about, um, but I'm sure you set up a lot of your life to allow your body to do high performance. Um, food, sleep, what, what are all the categories? Like where does that filter through in your life? So I call this, I, I call this creating an environment for success. Mm -hmm. I, I, I always, I've always said, um, that like discipline is, is what's the word? Um, <laughs> it's not as much of a, it doesn't play as much of a role as we think that it does. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be like so disciplined and like, and, and, and I totally fell into that. I was like, I'm going to be super strict with my eating and I'm going to be so disciplined with my sleep. 
And then I'm going to see all these results. And I would see results for like two weeks and then I would just fall apart. Uh, and, and so I kind of fig started figuring out that like, okay, I need to create this environment where I use less discipline and, uh, and, and, and so I'm not as strained, I'm not as tired to make these decisions that I want to make that are going to set me up for success. So for example, like putting my fruits and vegetables front and center in the fridge. So it's really easy to grab. I, I love cutting things up beforehand. So it's easy to just throw in like my burrito, I can throw bell peppers in super quick um, or having my rice already cooked, like that's a huge deal. Um, and, then, and then another thing like with sleep, when you, when people like, talk, when they're like, I've been having like such a hard time sleeping and I can't fall asleep. I'm like, well, were you just like watching TV for two hours before? <laughs> like, like, of course you're having a hard time falling asleep. You're on your phone or whatever. So, so that's another part of my like environment is me and my husband, we really like to start dimming the lights uh, early on. So we're really ready for bed and we, we get restful, restorative sleep. And that makes like a huge difference in, in how I feel about my day. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So so many applications. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back to storytelling. Yes. You get pregnant, you push yourself week by week, and <clears throat> come to this amazing, like, five minute or, yeah, five minute, oh. 20 second mile. So, so I will correct you. It was five minutes and 25 seconds. And what did I say, uh, you anyway. said 20, but it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. No, it, it matters though. It does matter. And I know there are people who are going to listen and they're going to want to know. So I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're being specific because yeah. five seconds I'm sure would be huge for you. So yeah. <laughs> let's keep it five minutes, 25 seconds. Well, I'll, I will say outside of pregnancy, five seconds is a lot, but during pregnancy, you know, I, I really, that mile, uh, mentally the way I showed up to that mile was so different than any uh mile I would have raced outside of pregnancy mm -hmm. I kind of was just like let's just have a good hard effort today and it was very even split like I ran 81s the whole time mm -hmm. uh, or usually if you wow. were to race a mile you you uh <laughs> you would start out a bit faster settle in you know you want to even split but then you would have this big kick you know at the end and and mm -hmm that obviously didn't happen. And, and so what I'm saying is, um, I really didn't even like train, uh, specifically for that mile. My husband reminded me like the week before I was like, Hey, did you want to like run that mile? I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot we wanted to do that. Um, <laughs> and so we did it. And when he posted it, you know, he was kind of just posting it for his friends to see like, Hey, update, like, I kind of just ran this mile, kind of cool. I don't know, maybe you won't think it's that cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, um, and, you know, then later that day, he was like, we kind of, your video has like more than like a million views and it's wow. climbing. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, why are people interested in this? Um, so, so I will say that my, my goal during pregnancy really was just to stay healthy and to keep my aerobic system as fit as possible even though it didn't mm -hmm. really look like I was that fit because you know you put on this weight and when you're uh, supposed to that's the yeah. part of being healthy in that pregnancy totally totally but obviously you're not going to be running as quite as fast as you were before mm -hmm. um and, and your pelvis is shifting and so you really want to be careful uh with like the workouts you're doing and and because your stride changes so uh as as I was saying the the mile, yeah, well, I, I really wasn't training like for that mile. It kind of just happened, which I think kind of testifies to the fact that when you are doing things that you enjoy and you're not really worried about like other, other people, you, you know, you get, you end up like excelling um, and, and people notice that and people are drawn to uh, people who are excelling and really enjoying what they do because it's authentic and, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm all, all about that. It was just wasn't, there's was nothing forced about it. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, I don't know anyone who would be running at nine months who wasn't doing it for joy and for fun. Right. And that is just, that is awesome. <laughs> Even though I will, like, I'll, I will say too that there were comments about like people being like, you know, 
is your husband making you do this? Oh my gosh. Like, he like <laughs> wants you to be super fit. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I am just doing this for me. Like you don't know me. Like, <laughs> There's a knife behind you and you're running on the treadmill. Yeah. Like what the heck? No, seriously. Like they're like, wow, expectations for women. I'm like, this is not an expectation. And I hope that when women see it, like they more look at themselves and are like, wow, like what can I accomplish today? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so. So anyway, it was just kind of funny getting the feedback. That's and, so funny. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. <laughs> if people won't get it, I mean, it doesn't matter how much joy you have on your face or in your voice, people, no. there will be a subset of people that will misunderstand you. Yeah. <laughs> Another funny comment actually was this woman in the video, my husband says, look at that big belly. And this woman was like, she's, she's like trying to defend me, you know, like, uh-huh. have a big she's belly. Pregnant. Like, it's yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I love when people are like, you're huge. I'm like, yes, I am. Because it's <laughs> like, it's what my body's supposed to be doing. And like, I think it's like, huge is a relative term. And I, I think yeah. it's so silly that we, you know, have these connotations with the, the, the word small and, and big and they're mm-hmm. just relative terms. And yeah, anyway, so. Yeah, it's not good and bad. It's right, just, it just is. description. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, I can get that. that. Fun. That okay, fun. so after you gave birth, which, how was the birth process for you with your very, yeah. very fit body? Did that go well? Hey, so, so giving birth is so different than exercise. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I, it definitely helps uh, with my recovery process. I think I noticed quite a difference uh with how how good i felt uh reco- recovering uh but during the birth like that's just, it's just like un- unlike anything else uh, i've ever experienced and i i feel like it's this thing you can't describe to other people until they really go through it um and, and so the labor was very long and hard and i just respect women so much i think you know, the women have been doing this since the beginning of time. So like, mm-hmm. so it's just absolutely incredible. Um, and, and I was very fortunate. I had a very healthy um, birth and, and labor. And so, yeah, it took me about two weeks uh, to recover before I kind of started attempting to do some, some miles. That was and, my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I started doing strides and one mile at a time, then running every other day. Um, and so then around week three or four, I guess. So that was after three weeks, uh, around week four, I started building mileage again uh, and just came back slow and kind of let my body dictate how I felt. And it was, it was really enjoyable feeling out my new body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a- how is it juggling, um, you know, pushing yourself physically with new motherhood. Cause that I like a several week old baby is still super needy. Yeah. Yeah. So I was very intentional about what I was doing. Um, so postpartum, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I, I got, I got to push myself a little bit more than pregnancy mm-hmm. and made sure I was very intentional about, um, you know, communicating with my husband and being like, Hey, when is, this work call and, and do I have to get up earlier to run or do, you know, I, do I need to run later in the day and being intentional about, uh, you know, again, going back to the hard and easy days, Mm -hmm. even though I wasn't starting workouts, like I would do a little bit longer on some days and a little bit shorter on other days. Um, and so, so again, this, this was like more so, uh, to communicate to women that, I asked for a lot of help and Mm -hmm. if I was really tired, like I slept when the baby slept, I made sure. Yeah. Again, going back to the intention, like I sleep was like number one priority. (laughs) I was like, we need to let my body heal and we need to, you know, uh, yeah, sleep and sleep is going to make that happen. So, so sleeping and, and communicating with my husband that all it, it, it's just started clicking by because you just only have so much time, especially in between naps and, mm-hmm. and then breastfeeding. And that was just a whole nother ball game. <laughs> uh, yes. Very whole dehydrated. Another big body change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, they say you're hungry during pregnancy. It's like, 
no like yeah is when you are hungry <laughs> like you, you yeah you eat so much more and, and you drink all the time so that was that was fun figuring that out so just to remind everybody you enjoy running and yeah. so running a couple weeks after giving birth is a form of self-care am i right yes yes it's just coming sure. back to yourself finding your sense of self again doing something that you really are finding joy in. Yeah. Because it, it's so easy to lose that in early motherhood. And I have, I have four kids and each postpartum was so different. And depending on the support and what I thought I needed, yeah, like it looked so different. So I think that is, that's really awesome that you made that a priority. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so there was even this one time where I, you know, was just breaking down crying. I was holding Kenny Lou to my chest and just like, I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> I can't do this. And my husband had to like come over to me and, and be like, okay, I'm going to take Kenny Lou from you <laughs> right now. Because like, you just have that lack, of, like as much as I was prioritizing sleep, like you still have that lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we we talked it out and we talked about my needs like you said and I just like wrote down a list I had to like break down everything that I wanted to do and that I could control at that moment mm -hmm. and that was that's a big deal is like letting go of the things that you can't control like for example I couldn't control when my baby was going to be fussy um and like writing down the things that I could control like uh you know when I was going to go out for my run or mm -hmm you know, the effort that I was going to put in, uh, or even, you know, the podcast I wanted to listen to, like, you just, you, you feel a lot better when you prioritize and, and write it out and get that all down. Yeah, absolutely. And then, okay. So then seven months later, you're in the Olympic trials. Yes. Yeah. So so did you, was that the plan? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so before I got pregnant, uh, in, in the beginning of 2020, we were out in Australia and I was, I was training with the Melbourne track club and they had, you know, this, uh, championship race coming up for the 5k. And I had kind of just started like getting back into races again. And so I was feeling really excited because I was like, Oh, like, I really want to compete in the Olympic trials this year for like, uh, the U S and when we go back and, like I just that 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 had always been one of my goals. I guess is what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was um, we had this 5K championship, and I was like, okay, like let's see where my fitness is really at. And I was feeling super fit. I had a great race like two weeks earlier where I ran my PR in the 3K, which is like sorry, your personal best, like the best okay. time I've ever ran uh -huh. in the, in the 3K. And so I jump in this 5K race, and it's like the Australian Championships. And at the two mile mark, my body just like, like, <laughs> no. Said no. And I just started dying and I got last place and I was like, what just happened? Like, I, I had no idea. I had never felt like that before. Uh, and the, the next day I went and took a pregnancy test and I was pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh did, how did that occur to you to, to that? That might be why, you know what? I, <laughs> I, I kind of pride myself a little bit on this, that I feel like I'm like very in tune um, with my body mm -hmm. and I had never felt that type of depletion before. So it had to be something big. Yeah. I just, okay. felt like, I was like, there's was something that just sucked. Like, <laughs> and, and it wasn't even like, cause, cause there are depletions where you start from the beginning and you're like, Oh, I don't feel that good already it was just so weird. Like I felt great from the beginning. And then just at the two mile mark, it was like, this like shut off. And I was like, like nope, I need those nutrients and that energy. Yeah, mom. It was like, this it is was mine. <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, so I went into, I, on the cool down too, I was talking with one of my friends and she was like, what do you think like could be the problem? And I was like, I don't know. Like I, I could be pregnant. Um, anyway, so that, that kind of got my mind going about it. Cause I was like, I really don't know what else. Like, I feel like I've just been doing everything so great. Um, and, and so we found out I was pregnant and how far along were you at that point? Um, out of curiosity. yeah, I actually, I was two days before I was supposed to start my period. Okay. So like 
all less than four weeks, like yeah. really, really early. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's that what I makes mean. sense. Cause those babies grow so fast that yeah. the difference of a day or two weeks, that's huge. Yeah. And also just like how in tune you have to be at that level with your body. Like I just knew something was off. I feel like if I, if, if I hadn't been running, I probably wouldn't have known or yeah. taking the test for, you know, another two or three weeks, but yeah, <laughs> I just was like something that's off and I know it. Um, so, so, so that was the beginning of 2020 and I, you know, was kind of, bum- I was like really excited because we wanted to start a family, but I was also really bummed because it was like, dang, I guess I've, I've like lost my chance of ever competing at the trials. And little did you know, yeah, <laughs> a couple months later, the, you know, the Olympics didn't happen. I was like, oh my gosh, like I could potentially, you know, go, uh, compete at the trials. And so, uh, that was kind of in the back of my mind for the pregnancy, but it really wasn't like the goal for yeah. seeing fit. I just really wanted to return to running um, and running competitively when I, uh, after I gave birth mm-hmm. and, and so then after I gave birth, started running, kind of put it in those base miles. And, um, I started including some tempo runs, which is just a longer effort, uh, maybe like 30 minutes of hard running. And I started realizing that I was running faster than I'd ever ran and I was at altitude and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> like, of yeah. I'm like, I think this might be a possibility. And, and, you know, the wheels kind of started turning a bit more for the Olympic trials there. And, and so that's when it, when it really started becoming a reality. <laughs> that is the coolest. How, how many months leading up to it? Did you really like, okay, I'm training for the Olympic trials. When did that start? Yeah. So how it works is you have to run a, uh, qualifying time at like a sanctioned track meet, uh, in a certain time period. And the time period is like a year and a half. Um, Mm -hmm. so you can run within a year and a half. And so I hadn't hit the time. And so I I felt like I was fit enough for the 5k and the 10k, but I just needed to get in a race and and hit the time. And so, and that was probably about in, in, in February, March. And I, I had races lined up for April and May. Uh, so it was that November, December, January. For, yeah. So like four or five months after, um, I started being like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to the trials. Uh, and then six or seven months after, um, I ran a 5k, I ran a personal best, but, uh, you kind of need a little bit more time to develop the speed. And I just, I don't, I don't think I had the time. And, uh, so I was about, uh, 15, 14 seconds off of that qualifying time for the 5k. Uh, but then yeah, for the 10k, which I, I ran two weeks later, uh, I hit the qualifying mark, uh, a bit under it. And, and so that was really exciting, uh, to, to hit that and be like, I'm going to the trials. (laughs) So Um, cool. (laughs) Yeah. And it, and it really was just cool too, because of, you know, who I had to like push myself to become, to, to run those times. Like the, the outcome is really great. Uh, but I just want to like reemphasize like the, the process and, mm-hmm. and the person I, I, I enjoyed being along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I got to be by the time that I got there was just, um, invaluable to me. And, mm-hmm. and I, I had a lot of time, a lot of, uh, sorry, I had a, a really good time, um, you know, bonding with my husband a bit more uh, to, to make that happen. Cause we had to work together a lot. Um, and, and my baby do you know, she doesn't know what I'm doing. And people are like, you're doing this for your baby. I'm like, yeah, like I am, but like, she doesn't, she doesn't care. Like, <laughs> like I could be such a great mom. okay to do it for you. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I guess what I'm saying is I could still be a great mom, even if I didn't make the Olympic trials. Oh um, yeah. And, and I think my baby would, would still appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but, but it, it, it was fun to, um, you know, have a little more purpose at, at the same time, like that it was for her, uh, to, sh- to show her, you know, that, that her mom is going after her, her dreams. Um, just like she can go after her dreams later in life when she, you know, realizes what happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's so beautiful. That's, one of the reasons that I keep doing the things that are important to me. Yeah. 
because it's, it's easy to get swallowed up in motherhood. And it's like, no, but what example am I setting? Mm -hmm. And what did my mom want for me? And what do I want for my kid? And I don't know, it's easier to prioritize my needs and my wants when I look at myself the way that a mother would look at me Mm -hmm. um, instead of feeling like I have to sacrifice everything to be, to be a parent or an adult. So I, I think that's really great. Right. Yeah. Um, so what has the process been? Now you are a professional athlete. You're getting yeah. paid to run. <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, yeah. So now I run for ASICS and I'm, so I, I told you when we were talking before, um, I'm doing some altitude training in park city and that's kind of been a part of the professional running is, uh, now having this budget that I can you know, move, relocate somewhere else uh, yeah. so that I could get a little bit more fit at higher altitude. So are you living in Park City right now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Only cool. we're doing like five weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. And, and, and then I, I got all great running shoes uh, to run in nice. <laughs> new gear, which has been really fun to rep uh, ASICs. Their, their motto uh, is sound sound mind sound body and okay. I, I i posted this on instagram and just i really thought it was just appropriate that i signed with them because i felt like uh during this past you know two years of running i'd never been more in touch you know mentally spiritually and physically like mm-hmm. they just were lining up um more than ever uh which is was just really cool uh, and so I, yeah, I've just really appreciated and been very grateful that ASICS is, is helping me out on my running journey. <laughs> That's so cool. Is that something you pursued? Do they come to you? Uh, no. So I pursued um, talking to an agent. Okay. He represents me. And so he, he talked to them for me. And then, yeah, that's how I kind of made that happen. When did you decide you wanted to become a professional athlete? Um, wow. So, I mean, it's always been like really cool to watch professional athletes and I don't know if I ever did like decided I wanted to be a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Uh, And even honestly, like after making the Olympic trials, like, I I mean, I, yeah, I did pursue an an agent, his name's Bob Wood. And I was like, Bob, you know, like, is this a possibility for me to go pro? Um, and so, I, so I guess it was like right before the Olympic trials that I decided, uh-huh. um, but if it didn't happen, I also had the option like that. It, it could not happen for me. People could not want me to represent them. And, um, I would have been totally okay with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I, like I told you before, I really appreciated, uh, the person that I was and that I was becoming, um, mm-hmm. by what I was doing. And so, you know. If someone wanted to take advantage of that, I would have welcomed it. But if not, like I would have just kept on going. <laughs> yeah. Cause this is what you love to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what is, what's next for you? Uh, so right now I am training for the New York marathon. Okay. What is that? And that's in November 7th. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. So there's six major marathons and New York is one of them. And so it's, it's a big deal to be a part of their elite, um, group and and so I'm, I'm really excited it's going to be very fast and there's some very competitive women that will be there <laughs> oh that's so exciting okay I'm gonna I'm gonna watch for you yay <laughs> that's so cool. like I know her oh, that's so great <laughs> um do you have bigger goals outside of that or are you just it's still like one race at a time yeah I I do have bigger goals outside of that but um it's, it's, yeah, it's always a balance of, of one race at a time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, cause you're going to reset your goals off of what happened in that last race. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, bigger goals would be making, you know, world championship teams, uh, from, you know, track to the, the half marathon team, um, and, and possibly the Olympics in three years, but for sure. Let's see how this first marathon goes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I'm so stoked. Thanks. Thanks. So cool. 
so inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing yes. your story with us and just being so down to earth and real. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I know. It was good talking to you, Alyssa. Yeah. Do you have any uh, final advice or comments for our listeners? Ooh. Um, I women say, of ambition. Yeah, women of ambition. Um, I would say that embrace, you know, the the part of you that wants more, and that and that's okay to want more. Um, but and also to to make it happen, ask for help. Help. Um, I'm I'm a big advocate of of people um, supporting people and and create a support system even if you don't have feel like you have one uh create a good support system because that's that's a really big deal uh, and and you can still be a mom and <laughs> go after what you want you can have both it might not be a perfect balance and and that's totally okay but you can have both <laughs> excellent thanks so much mckenna yeah i so appreciate you spending your time here um i hope you love park city and if you want to, you know, run down to Heber and say hi, that's totally good with me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, and we will keep an eye out for you and see okay. where you go next. So exciting and awesome. So thanks so much for being with us. All right. Thanks again, Alyssa. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this has been an episode of the Women of Ambition podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Calder-Hume. Next week, we will do a post-pod episode with key takeaways from McKenna's message and break down how to work her takeaways into our journeys for success. If you'd like to find other episodes of the Women of Ambition podcast, visit womenofambitionpodcast.com and find us on Instagram at Women of Ambition Podcast. Thanks so much for listening.